Good afternoon and welcome to the place where Gary and Pam Mason gathered and shared life with fellow Christians for many years. Uh, to us here at the Grand Strand Church of Christ, uh, the names Gary and Pam go together like peas and carrots, and peanut butter and jelly. Uh, they were one and the same, a dynamic duo who richly blessed our lives. I'll be honest, it took some time for me to finally forgive them for moving from the beach to the mountains, but a couple of weeks ago I managed to finally uh, forgive them. Um, just a few weeks into the pandemic of 2020, news reached us of Gary's surprising and tragic death, with Pam, of course, right by his side. Our hearts broke for her and for us, because Gary was the kind of person you always look forward to seeing again. And his death meant that that would never happen again this side of eternity. <clears throat> The pandemic put many things on pause, including, including a proper memorial of a life well lived by Gary. And so today the waiting is over and the time to honor and pay tribute to the one who was fearfully and wonderfully made by his creator is here. And so thank you for being here as a living witness to Gary's life and a source of comfort and encouragement to Pam and their family. At this time, Gary's friends in the Pauly's Island concert band uh, will play How Great Thou Art.
Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Andrew, one of the grandsons of Gary Mason. Gary Mason, husband, father, grandfather, musician, 1946 to 2020. Robert Gary Mason, 73, of Paws Island, South Carolina, passed away peacefully at home with his loving wife, Pamela, by his side on March 31st, 2020, in Maggie Valley, North Carolina. Gary preceded in death by his parents, Ruth Holloway Mason and Frank Hugh Pete Mason, Jr. He is survived by his wife, Pamela Green, his daughter, Lori Wortman, her husband, Chad Wortman, and grandsons, Mason and Kelsey, Ross and Shelby, Wesley and William Wortman, daughter, Amy Butcher, and grandsons, Alex and Lindsay, and Andrew Butcher, sister, Connie Brown, brother-in-law, Larry Brown, and nieces, Stacy and John Henson, and Rebecca and Brad Denton, and their children, Cole and Ansley Denton. He's also survived by his great stepchildren, Valerie Green, her husband, Sean Kennedy, and grandson, Weston Green Kennedy. Robert Green, Claire Weaver, and her husband, Craig Weaver, and granddaughters, Phoebe and Lila Weaver. Until his later years, Gary was a proud resident of Ross School, Georgia, in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Gary graduated from City High School in Chattanooga in 1964 and the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga in 1968 with a degree in engineering physics. His professional career included construction design, construction management, and school fundraising, and he retired in area manager role at Home Depot. Gary served as the chairman of the board of directors from Boyd Buchanan School in Chattanooga and served on the board of directors for the South Carolina Safe Home Pro Program from 2007 on. He was known for his integrity and upstanding way of doing business. Gary's love of music began as a boy when he sang with the Chattanooga Boys Choir, and he later served as the director of the Wonderful Word Acapella Chorus. Gary's long tenure with the Chattanooga Symphony Orchestra as a timpani player began when he was still in high school. He was incredibly proud of his band, the Inside Five, which won a national competition and cut an album. While he was immensely proud of his professional music endeavors, he relished sharing music with his family and friends even more. His beautiful tenor voice would ring and his guitar would sing along. Time spent making music together is what his fa family and friends would treasure the most. Gary's love of music followed him to Pauly's Island, South Carolina, where he moved in 2002. Gary fell in love with the low country culture and community he found there. He left performing with and serving as the president of the Pauly's Island Concert Band going out dancing, seeing local music acts with his wife and friends, and spending time with his family, especially his grandchildren. Gary and Pamela split their time between Pauly's Island, South Carolina, and Maggie Valley, North Carolina, where Gary had made a number of wonderful new friends in recent years. Gary was a member of the Grand Strand Church of Christ in Surfside Beach, South Carolina, and loved worshiping with the Central Haywood Church of Christ in Clyde, North Carolina, when he and Pamela were in the mountains. The loss of Gary's larger-than-life personality, generous spirit, and artistic presence leaves an emptiness, but the memories that remain are sweet and consoling.
As much as music was important to Gary, so was his faith. So this morning, if you would bow with me in prayer. Our Lord and Father, today as we have gathered to celebrate the life and remember a man who was a husband, a father, a grandfather, the man who was just a great friend to so many of us. We are reminded about the fragile nature of life and just how important our Christian faith is at moments like that. Father, we would ask that you watch over us as we remember for Father, there are people that come into the world and intersect with our lives who make us better people, who make our lives more interesting and enjoyable, and Gary was one of those people. Oh, we will certainly miss his sense of humor and the endless collection of stories that he could bring to just about any situation that would bring a smile to our faces. We'll miss the fact that that uh, his love of music was something that he shared with every one of us. We, Father, we just uh, will miss all of the times that we got to spend with him where we could see his love of life and love for each, for each one of us and the joy that he just brought to every, every situation he was a part of. <coughs> Father, we will certainly miss him in so many different ways. As we leave here later today, Father, there will be many times where we will remember him. As we see a guitar or a banjo or, or Father, we hear a certain uh, song in our hearts. And, and Father, we just pray that you'll watch over his family, that any time that that happens, that Father, that their tears of joy will, or of, of sorrow will be turned into tears of joy, knowing that Gary is exactly where he always wanted to be, and that is singing in your heavenly choir. Father, we look forward to the day when we can be with him and with you in your presence. And Father, reminisce about all the good things in life, life that we had here and life that we will have there. And Father, we know that, that Gary would want us to leave here saying thank you. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and the gift of grace that's going to allow all of that to happen. Father, watch over us. Keep us safe. Give us a life of, of great joy and one of great memories. And Father, if you see Gary, when you see Gary, tell him just how much we miss him. It's through Jesus we pray. Amen.
Like you, my mind is filled with a series of snapshot memories of Gary. And I don't know why some have uh, stuck in my brain while others haven't. For instance, I can still see Gary on a Sunday after church in the Fellowship Center. We're having one of our monthly potlucks and I'm working the crowd trying to talk to as many people as possible and, and Gary gets my attention and pulls me aside and he says, Jay, look around. And I'm looking around. And he says, do you see this? Do you see all the little kids running and weaving their way in and out, all of the adults? He says, there aren't many places left on the planet like this where young and old alike can be in each other's company and all feel safe and secure together. I probably said something like, okay, and continued to work the crowd, but, but later I realized that, that Gary was teaching me something about the joy of Christian fellowship. When our church embraced a, a ministry to people struggling with addictions a number of years ago, uh, I remember Gary's pledge to help. And as 10 to 12 addicts in recovery uh, started attending our church on Sunday mornings, uh, Gary always made them feel welcome. He made a point of going to them and uh, starting conversations with them. He built friendships with a number of them. And when they were ready, he helped them to find work so they could begin to contribute back uh, to society. Of course, there are too many snapshot memories to tell of, of Gary's descriptions of his grandsons. He loved to talk about those boys. He was so proud of each of them. But what I most often recall about Gary is this, this steady picture of how he just enjoyed life. He possessed the, the curiosity of a child and uh, was always up for new adventures. And usually people like that annoy me. The kind of people, you know, who seem to be happy all of the time. I'm not one of those people. I, I have to work at it a little more than others. But for people like Gary, it just seems to come naturally. You know, there's a science associated with happiness. People research it. One researcher discovered that uh, 50 percent of happiness is genetics, 10 percent is related to circumstances, and 40 percent are related to choices. I'm guessing Gary had it in his genes at 50 percent, but none of us can control our circumstances, so a big part of Gary's happiness, I believe, was related to the choices that he made in life, and so as I was considering what scripture to use today in this eulogy uh, to frame and paint another picture of Gary's life, I decided to take your attention to Psalms 1, 1 through 3. It says, Happy is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers, not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Did you see it? The way the Bible connects happiness with the choices that we make and the relationships that we build. A few years ago, Robert Waldinger gave one of the 10 most viewed TED Talks in history. A Harvard professor, he concluded a study on the good life which began back in 1938. For 75 years, researchers tracked 724 men. Half were students at Harvard at one time. The other half uh, were raised in uh, troubling parts of the city of Boston. They tracked them for 75 years. As it turns out, the determining factor in happiness was not whether you went to Harvard or lived in the Boston projects. 
Happiness had nothing to do with wealth, fame, or hard work, and everything to do they found with relationships. The people who lacked good ones in their study were more likely to suffer from poor health, live shorter lives, and be the unhappiest. The exact opposite was true of those whose lives were filled with good relationships. Dr. Lori Santos, who taught the most popular class in the history at Yale called Psychology in the Good Life, and who studies science, the science of happiness for a living, also learned one of the strongest predictors of staying happy in life was simply the possession of good relationships. But if you can't trust the science on happiness, Perhaps you can consider trusting the Bible on happiness. The greatest commands in all of Scripture are, one, love God with all your heart, and two, love your neighbor as yourself. Do you see it? It's about good relationships with your Creator and with the people around you. Good relationships with God and with people turn us into the kind of happy person envisioned in Psalm 1. One who's like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season. I'll never be able to read that verse in Scripture again without thinking of Gary Mason. He delighted in the law of his Lord. He meditated upon it daily. He enriched his life with the choices he made to honor the law of God and to build relationships with so many people. We'll miss Gary. His friends with the Pauly's Island Concert Band will now play the song In the Garden.
time, we'd like to invite anyone present who uh, has a memory or thought about Gary that uh, could bless uh, the group to come forward and, and share that. Anyone who wants to do that now can make your way forward and I'll sit down. Mr. Don? We've all heard the expression, somebody that would give you the shirt off their back. And Pamela knows exactly what I'm talking about. We were in potluck. My wife and I were sitting down and I seen Gary and Pam coming through the line. Gary had on an old leather jacket, all worn. I told Kay, I said, I love that jacket. <laughs> so I go up and tell him, I said, Gary, I love that jacket. I go back and sit down. He comes over and he says, stand up. I had on a sport coat, so I took it off. He took the jacket off and said, try it on, which I did. He said, okay, I'm going to give you this leather jacket. I absolutely love it. He said, now be sure you hold on to it. And I said, Gary, I will. I will keep this jacket till the day I pass. And I will, and I love that jacket. I started to wear it today, but it's a little too warm. <laughs> but that, <laughs> that's just the type of man he was. Pam, I think, had bought him that jacket. And I think she got him another one. <laughs> This old jacket, it's worn. I have wore it here at church. It is my most prized jacket that I own of all. And I just, every time I look at that, I think of Gary. Very loving, kind, Christian man. And we all miss him very much. These are um, some words from daughter and son-in-law, Lori and Chad Portman. There are many words that come to mind when we think about Gary. He was a kind man that would do just about anything for anyone. He received a great deal of joy from serving others. It wasn't uncommon to hear him talk about a new worker he had hired, and for most of them, worker was a stretch, simply to help someone in need of help, helping hand. Gary was generous. From buying food and other basic necessities to paying for shelter and gas, Gary would do his best to see that he or she was taken care of. Gary was talented. He loved to sing and play his guitar and share his gifts with anyone who would listen, or better yet, sing along. Gary was accepting. He would pretty much meet you where you were, no matter what you had been through. He didn't judge, he just cared. Gary wasn't perfect, as none of us are, but he was a good man that was proud of his daughters and his grandsons. You're worried because you're thinking she's a teacher, she's not gonna keep this short. <laughs> My daddy was really funny, as you all know, and um, he loved a, a good joke and a prank or just a humorous story, and it made him proud when Lori and I would come through with those funny stories and, um, and a good prank. I thought that was fitting that yesterday was April Fool's Day for us <laughs> to, to be honoring him today. Um, my dad was patient. It's been said over and over. I loved hearing that there was a theme recurring and it was, I kept hearing the word serve and patient and accepting and kind and kind hearted. Um, my husband Jason reminded me of one of the first times I brought him home, my dad was working on some windows and they were removing some windows and Jason really messed one up really badly from his inexperience, but my dad didn't get angry or upset. He just used it as a time to learn and a time of teaching and a time of, you know what, you'll, you'll get it next time. My dad was a great listener. Um, if you're around him a lot, 
I know he did share a lot of stories, but he was also listening intently. And he knew a lot about people, and people sought him out to share their issues and problems and stories, especially when he was an elder, because they knew they would be heard, not just a story that would be heard at one time and then forgotten. He truly listened. He was giving. He taught us how to love others by serving. Many times we saw him um, follow people to the gas station to get gas, to help them get gas, or to get them anything that they needed. Um, we saw him definitely always looking for opportunities to serve. My dad was talented. He was a talented percussionist. He loved you all, and y'all played so beautifully today. He appreciated fine music and fine musicians and people who were lifelong musicians. Our children, mine and my sisters, have all grasped that. We've had trumpet players and uh, piano players and um, trombone players and guitar players all come. His grandsons all appreciate fine music. And my sister can't be here with us today because she is fervently directing the cast of Beauty and the Beast right now back home in Chattanooga. And she definitely followed in his footsteps and leads the, she's the head of the fine arts department at our school, at Borgie Cameron School now. He wasn't just talented in music though, he was also talented with building and creating and woodworking, and I know that came from his father. Um, he was a lifelong learner, and he always, he just couldn't get enough of learning. He loved books, but not so much to read them in, in his later life. He liked to listen to books more, but he loved just looking at the pictures. He loved photography. There wasn't much he couldn't do, and we were remembering that his phrase was, it's just work when there would be a task it, you know, if you got the tools and the time, it's just work. We can do it. It's not, nothing's going to stop us. We can do it. When I got married, I got married in a building that didn't allow instruments. Go figure. And um, I really, there was a song I really, really wanted to, to have played. And my dad stayed up many hours, leaving, the days leading up to my wedding, and wrote, um, a four-part vocal harmony, beautiful rendition of the song that I wanted to play. And before I walked down the aisle, my bridesmaids walked into this beautiful song that he had worked so hard on. And it was just so special that that had come to fruition. Even though that took a lot of time and a lot of hours, he didn't, he didn't say no, he just did it. It was hard work, but he did it. He was an amazing song leader. People loved for him. I've heard him sing How Great Thou Art at many funerals, and some people he didn't even know them, but he sung How Great Thou Art many times at people's um, request. He loved his grandchildren. He was proud of everything they did, even if it wasn't that impressive. He could make it impressive with a story. He loved his family, and he was proud that Lori and I became teachers, especially at a school where we could serve every day. We spent the last 28 years at the school where he served on the board, and we continue to tell the story of Jesus every day in our lives. While our lives um, and our story, our family story, is not a picture-perfect one, but it is a love and grace-filled one. And I believe that Dad would want us to continue on loving and serving. Love who you can and give what you have. Go rest high, Daddy. We'll be there soon. Thank you for sharing those, those memories of Gary. Uh, we're going to conclude uh, first with a, a video recording uh, that uh, four of his grandsons made uh, singing 
uh, will the circle be unbroken? And then we'll have a final prayer. Close with me in prayer. Lord God, for the life that you shared with us, for the way in which you filled Gary's heart with your spirit, we give you praise, God, and thanksgiving. And God, uh, we feel now even more called to use the time that we have remaining on this earth to love and to serve and to protect those around us. Would you bless Gary's family and friends with uh, your great comfort and power as they also seek to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. We pray this in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm going to first uh, dismiss Gary's family, and they're going to be in the <coughs> lobby. Uh, if you would like to stop and uh, uh, speak to them, but hopefully you won't just stop there. Uh, you'll proceed to the Fellowship Center, which is the far part of the building where cookies and coffee and refreshment awaits to allow you more time uh, to spend with each other. So first of all, Miss Pamela, and she gathers her, her things. There you go. And anybody else that wants to be dismissed with the family at this time? Again, thank you all for being here. Thank you, Paulie's Island Concert Band, for blessing us uh, with your presence. You are now dismissed to greet the family and to uh, fellowship with each other.